Again, hello and welcome to show number 10 of Global Perspectives with Dr. Michael Lightman, where we discuss what's happening in the world today. Hello, Dr. Lightman. Uh, Dr. Lightman, can you switch on the mic, please? I can't hear you. Can, can. Yeah, yeah. Hello, everyone. Oh, good. All right. So uh, today's topic is uh, something uh, a little different. Um, we started uh, publishing your articles on a new platform. It's called Biz Catalyst 360. And the readers there are very intelligent and very responsive. And um, they wrote very interesting comments about your article. And I'd like to get your perspective on their perspectives on your perspective. So, if I may, I'd like to read you uh, summaries of their, of their uh, comments and see what you have to say, and then we'll relay it back to them. Okay? Um, so, the first one is uh, Wendy's. She writes, I don't see any way that the lifestyle your post proposes could work. Not many of us would be suited or capable of the society described here. Through human history, epidemics have come and gone, and the evolution of society shows that because we adapt, we are still here. She says, speak to Generation Z, to the 20-year-olds. They are not going to follow the program your post so eloquently elucidates. So she says, basically, it's not practical. Um, what, what can you say to that? I can say just one thing. What I'm bringing from the wisdom of Kabbalah is actually a shift into a new world, a good, pleasant shift, easy shift, smooth. Whereas if we don't do it, then really, we'll have to do it under acute measures and blows that humanity is not yet familiar with. But nature that is completely integral has a plan of shifting all of mankind, bringing all of us to an integral form, meaning that all of us will be interconnected, caring for one another, and directed toward each other in a good way. She's making a point saying that not all of us will be suited. In other words, she thinks that perhaps some people will be suited for it and some will not. Um, what do you think about that? I don't think that it's up to man altogether. Man, all in all, is very sensitive to suffering, problems, illnesses. He's very sensitive to all of these things and in a very immediate way. Therefore, there's no problem to force a person to do anything through suffering, to bend them, for him to keep all the laws, especially that these laws, they lead him to something good. So you don't think that it takes a special kind of person to live in such a society um, basically, the society you describe in this article is, is what you always say is the solution, a society of mutual responsibility, of caring for each other, of, of getting the basic needs for everyone and then contributing um, what you can to the society yes. and basically engaging most of the time in socializing. So you don't think it takes a special kind of person to, to be able to live like that? No. No, everyone. All the people in the world will learn how to treat each other in a good, integral, favorable way, in an integral society, in a good mutual connection between everyone, and this will be their main engagement, occupation, and only a bit of their time will they be engaged in providing for their basic needs. It seems like people who are successful um, in, in the system that existed up until... COVID-19, um, will have a harder time adapting to the new system because they were successful, they had achievements, they, they have more to lose than others, perhaps. Um, what, what can you offer? Yes, but this pandemic will clean everything very quickly. Very quickly. 
meaning it works according to the method, to the measure to which we're capable of accepting, coming closer to other people openly in a good and nice way, to think about the world as an integral world, to set laws of integral connection between us. Accordingly, nature will relate to us and return also in a good way, and if not, then we'll get blows, in a good or in a bad way. That's how it is. But we will reach a state where all of us will be interconnected because all of us are a part of one mechanism. Another thing I noticed uh, um, about um, the changes that COVID-19 is forcing on us is the speed. In other words, um, whenever I heard you before uh, speak about the changes that humanity has to go through, you always talked about a process, about a prolonged process of education, about things changing over a, a, a gradual process and, and taking time. Here, within a matter of months, civilization changed. Everything changed. How can people adapt to such a rapid change? It's not a problem for people. It's not a problem. For sure, we'll adapt. We'll accept all of these changes. We have no choice. And one way or another, it'll but take it, time. That's the thing. It's not just people who have to adapt. It's systems. In other words, right now, um, there's, there's a situation where people uh, have lost their jobs. They've lost their incomes. They're running out of um, Social Security benefits and unemployment benefits. And there is no system to replace it to give them the basic sustenance yet. It's like it's happening too fast for the government, for the authorities to handle it. So people are left um, not knowing how to take care of their basic sustenance. So that's what I'm asking about. How, how can we adapt so quickly as a society to such a rapid change, not just as individuals? I'd say that it's not a problem, because nature is controlling us, and it's not we that are controlling or managing, governing ourselves, ever. We get orders and parameters, information, data, states from nature, and respond accordingly. And nature that's directing us is already taking into account the way we are built, the way we respond, the state that we're in, both socially wise, internationally wise, generally wise, all around the world, and the way we get along with technology and building different social systems. It's not a problem. I don't think that, in this regard, we can have any complaints toward nature, only toward ourselves, for us to be able to correctly respond to what nature is presenting us with. And what nature is presenting us with is always correct at the ideal pace, in the correct stages that are very interconnected, in a way that we can't criticize it. What exactly do you mean when you say that nature is is running us, governing us, and not we? Because in my day-to-day -day life, I don't feel it. I feel as if I'm the owner of my decisions. And you're saying nature is governing everything. What does that mean? This has to do with the system of concealment that we think that we're acting, that we're deciding, that we're operating everything, and as if there's nothing else besides ourselves here. And this is incorrect. To the contrary, there are no actions here that we can do ourselves but only that we'll listen to what nature is demanding of us, and if we'll help a bit, that'll already be good. Okay, thank you. Um, I want to move on to another person. Um, a man named Joel asked, um, he said you were talking about uh, integrating in society and creating a more um, cohesive society, a, more, a, so, a society with more solidarity, and, and unity in it. And right now in America, there is 
a terrible division, terrible division within the country. Um, it's an election year. Mm-hmm. An, election, an election year is always a very tense year. And this year it's especially so. We, we see what's going on there. Um, and, and people feel it and express it. So in this case, Joel is asking, um, he, he, it was more of a, of a political uh, reply that he wrote. I cut out all the political um, content and just, the, the basic question is this. You don't socially integrate with people who hate you. That's what he feels. He feels that there are people on the other side of the political map, maybe on the other, of the other color, that in general, people hate each other. And he says, you don't socialize with them. You can't. He says, your theories are your own, and you have a right to them. He's not talking specifically about you. He says about every person in America can have his own ideas. Um, officially, uh, is entitled to have his own ideas. But in my estimation, um, he says this time about your theory, they are not realistic. He says, the situation in America is so serious that you can't bridge the gaps anymore. That's true. And precisely because the situation is so serious and extreme that it's impossible to bring both sides closer and the rift is only growing. So we understand that Here we need some kind of a very special method that we can't find on this planet. But that this method is based, built on the two forces of nature, plus and minus, that appear before us in different forms, these two forces, and that nonetheless, between them, we can find a common state, a common force, a formula that connects them together. This formula isn't built on each bending the other, subjugating, neutralizing the other, but by both of them connecting above themselves. It's called Love Covers All Crimes. It's a well-known method that was written about thousands of years ago, and we only have to know how to use it. But nature leaves us no other way to exist in this world and to continue from the state that we have reached. And from one day to the next, by not turning to this correction of love covers all crimes, We will find ourselves standing in front of an abyss without any solution. So you're saying in the existing methods that people have to bridge gaps, to bridge over hatred, there is no solution anymore. We've run out of solutions. No, I'm talking on all levels. It could be in children's play. It could be between spouses and a family, between countries for sure, between different parts in society and each and every country, we will not find our ego has grown in different ways in society in such a way that everyone's very conspicuous and different and we won't be able to compromise. So you're saying from from here on, we're only going to see greater and greater disintegration, separation, and division in society and in the world, right? It's been going on for a long time. This is the nature of developed beings. That the more developed we are, we have many opinions and they're very different. Now, we have to know how do we connect with one another above our differences. What does it mean, uh, what does it mean above um, all the disputes, all the divisions? What does it mean to go above something? Because usually everyone wants to bend the other, to prove to them that I'm right and you listen 
and I'm king, and you'll be my servant. And here we see that it doesn't work, because everyone feels at least equal to others and will not bend by no means. And even if he's willing to agree in something, the next moment he has a new solution and he disagrees. And therefore we have to bring a completely different method here, a new method that talks about compromise for the sake of connection that we want to achieve. We don't want to see which of us is going to control the other, but what we want to reach is a state where both of us will connect as one and will control the situation in a whole complete and perfect way. But, but that's exactly the problem. It's, it's, a, it's a struggle over control. That's exactly what they want. They want to control. So um, what, what, what will they be... Um, how will they stop fighting over control? How will they stop wanting to control the other? First of all, because they'll understand that it's impossible, that this way they don't reach anything. That compromise can be if each of them leaves his own opinion and connect above it, above these two opinions, to a third opinion. What does that mean? What is a third opinion? Uh, and what does it mean to leave and go above your opinion? that they build a connection that doesn't belong to the one or to the other, but a new connection that precisely out of all the differences between them, that they build the place of connection. I understand that I don't exactly have the words yet, but there is an emotional and intellectual matter here that we have to be connected together and to understand that we won't reach any solution in any other way. I'll, t I'll tell you uh, what's on my mind as I listen to you. I once uh, had a workshop with uh, several Americans um, it was a, a long two-hour discussion, very good, um, very, very honest. And at the end of the discussion, um, one, uh, one woman, uh, she's, a, she's a leader in her community, she's a rabbi, and she approached me and uh, she said very honestly, she said, I understand what you're trying to say, and it's a good message. But, and she asked it with a lot of pain. She said, how do you connect with people who don't want to connect with you? I connect with them and they connect with me because we've examined and we understand that unless we connect, then this will be our burial place. But what if some people understand it and some people still don't? then we'll have to educate everyone. We'll have to discuss and open the entire situation to everyone. It's a long way. It's education. That by education we show everyone that there is no other way, that there is no compromise, because compromise is always where someone concedes something. Here we don't concede anything. What does that mean that you're not uh, relinquishing anything, you're not giving up anything? I remain with what's mine and you remain with what's yours. And we turn to a third side. And that third side, it doesn't include both of them. It's above both of them. That we connect in a third kind of way. It's a state that is above yours and above mine, and we accept it because only that way can we exist. 
um, it seems to me like it's still a process. Mm. Can there be a situation? It is a process. A process that, first of all, we examine and see that we have no other solution. You don't, and I don't. Okay, but in a society, you have many people, and 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 each person um, has his own pace, his own uh, level of understanding. My question is: Can there be a society where some people understand what needs to be done, some people still don't? And the result is two societies living side by side. One according to the rules of mutual responsibility and one according to the rules of, let's call it, the old world, the way it used to be. Can, they, can the two live? We'll have to advance them toward an equal point. Both of them have to know where they are and that there is no other way and only the way that we're introducing where we have to rise above these two opinions to a third side, which is in the direction of the upper force. Then only that way can we succeed and continue existing. Um... Two, two of the comments, uh, the, the two comments that, that I read, both said that your theory sounds great in practice, but in reality it's not realistic. My question is, how can you tell if a theory is realistic or not? I understand that in the corporeal world that we're living in, that we experience today, that, of course, what I'm offering is considered to be unrealistic. But we're very quickly approaching a state where we'll start understanding, feeling, inquiring a higher degree than our own, that there, things that contradict one another can also be connected with each other. It's actually already happening in technology, in math, physics. It will also happen in the human mind. The only problem is that right now, in ordinary human beings, in ordinary people, they don't yet have the ability to build inside themselves this kind of mechanism. And therefore, we're in two lines. And the middle line, that's called Love Covers All Crimes, which is something completely different, new, that doesn't exist in the one or the other side. But they can build it according to the method that the wisdom of Kabbalah offers us, and then they can exist. But they simply have, each of them has to simply let go of his own opinion and to build a third line. Um, I had um, another uh, comment that I wanted to, to, to get your uh, perspective on, but uh, we don't have enough time. What I would like to ask for a conclusion is um, if you can uh, give us a kind of a takeaway in the current situation that we're living in, um, what should people, people's frame of mind be when they come to, to communicate with other people? These people are all very, um, very engaged in society. They work in the corporate world, in different companies. Um, in their approach to other people, what what should, let's say, change from today to tomorrow so that we move toward the kind of society you're describing? They have to understand more and more every day that if we keep on going the way we are now, we're reaching a dead end. The coronavirus, other phenomena that is becoming revealed now, even worse, in society, they're all coming to show us 
that we have to find the kind of connection between us that doesn't come out of struggle from trying to control one another, but only according to the measure to which we identify with the integral nature, that all of us want to be connected in order to keep the integral system between ourselves too. Well, Dr. Lightman, I want to thank you very much for your uh, perspectives. And uh, I'll relate to, to, to the people who wrote the comments and we'll write about it wherever we can. Thank you again and uh, let's hope, all of us, that we can start moving toward it because, as we heard, we don't want to go the other way, which is uh, much harder and much more painful. So thank you very much, Dr. Lightman. Thank you all for watching and we'll see you on our next show. Until then, all the best. Good luck.